Roses are red, violets are blue. How can you say you love her if you won't even eat her poo? Sup guys, Alice from Nothing Box TV here, and I have a question for you. Do you like poorly lit spirits, vital fluid ambition, canis lupus, amputee, and senior circlet? Then this video is for you. This video is actually mostly for those who haven't played a FromSoft game, but it's also for those who are dung eaters. And if you're a dung eater, it's disgusting no, 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 and it needs to stop. Me. From the perspective of being pretty fresh to the series still, I can honestly tell you Elden Ring is one of the greatest games ever made. And don't worry, this isn't a video review. This is more to entice newcomers that felt the same way as me where I didn't know if it was worth trying or not. But even if you're a Souls veteran, stick around. We'd love to hear some comments and feedback. This game went from a casual keeping my eye on it to probably my favorite game of all time. So here are the steps that I came up with for beating Elden Ring. Step 1. Stop telling yourself you're bad at video games. Step 2. Stop telling yourself that these games are difficult. Finally, with step 3, beat Elden Ring. With these simple steps, you'll be a single stay-at-home mom making six figures in no time. My name is Skylar White, yo. My husband is Walter White, yo. Over the last four years, I had found myself becoming more and more bored and disappointed with the AAA games industry. Games would often release broken, unfinished, missing content from previous games or competitors, or literally all of the above. At best, you are offered a polished but stale experience. At worst, you have your Battlefield 2042s or GTA Trilogy remasters, where it feels like you figuratively spat in my drink and then made sure to tell me afterwards. Coming from a game like Halo Infinite, I was pretty jaded with quite a bitter taste in my mouth for overhyped and rushed games. And I was already preparing to brush this game off like I did with every other Dark Souls due to intimidation. In fact, it really got to the point where I was only playing the Skate Trilogy, games like Burnout Revengeance, or literally nothing at all. He did the same joke about three times already. I don't think it's funny anymore. So the game comes out and I buy it on release day. Weird, right? I bought Dark Souls and uninstalled it about 42 times. Bought Whoa, Bloodborne, hey returned it the next day. Back. Bought Sekiro, actually got about a third of the way through, but then gave up temporarily. So what in the world was I thinking? I took a chance and it paid off. For the first time in years, I feel like I'm playing a 6th generation game, and I mean that as a compliment. The game is a complete package. Aside from some performance issues on PC, the game is a finished product with a beginning, middle, and end, and whatever DLC awaits us is going to be a fleshed out expansion of the game. I understand that the previous games were also complete packages as well, but the feeling of this game being worth $60 at launch is amazing by itself. There are plenty of polished games on release, especially when it comes to Sony exclusives to use an example, but there are too many games that feel incomplete because developers release games unfinished with a quote unquote promise it'll be finished down the road. Like Split Screen, Halo, I'm looking at you. I'd argue that games in terms of quality and storytelling have definitely improved since the PS2 and Xbox generation, but back then developers were forced to make sure that their games were complete since games could rarely be fixed after the game shipped. I feel like developers sometimes look at patching games as the dreaded saying of we'll just fix it in post. Sometimes that could mean, hey, here's a couple bug fixes to perfect the game, to here's my early access AAA game release that will take years to actually be something noteworthy. Elden Ring is an example of the former, and more games should follow suit. You took my only food! Like I mentioned before, Elden Ring wasn't my first FromSoft game. It was actually Sekido. I eventually beat Sekido after Elden Ring, but something that I took away between the two games was that Elden Ring has moments where you could just rest while playing. While playing Sekido, the game doesn't really give you time to rest figuratively. Sure, you can always chill at a sculptor's idol or pause the game, but the entire world essentially wants to kill you with little to no exceptions in an extremely dense package. And don't get me wrong, Elden Ring is also relentless. However, with how wide and expansive the game is, it feels like you can breathe and it reminds you that you can use your safe word. Maybe it's because the game is nearly 16, 16 times, times the detail, detail of any other FromSoft game, but those moments really stuck with me. It's like the giraffe scene in The Last of Us, a beautiful moment between so many moments of chaos, pain, anguish, suffering, and unnecessary sequels. The game really lets you breathe in between golf club swings. If a boss is too difficult, just go somewhere else. To me, this is actually the greatest addition to a FromSoft game, and I think some breathing room should always be there in the future games, even if they aren't as massive or open world. I got word of a settlement that needs our help. I'll mark it on your map. A small few of you might hate this, but the map is just literally a map. You could put markers on there yourself, and there are just a few essential things on there, like Sides of Grace. But the map doesn't have a Waze sponsorship notifying you that there's an Omen King hazard in the road ahead. In fact, I was actually pretty indifferent to how minimal the map was until I tried playing Far Cry 5 and realized how much better Elden Ring's map design was. Far Cry 5 is definitely one of the games ever made. 
Hi, how are you? The opening was pretty cool, but immediately after, I was completely bombarded by quest markers, side missions, tower things, and only God knows what else. I don't think it's funny anymore. Elder Ring doesn't just want you to explore your way and at your leisure. It also doesn't want to annoy you either. Could you imagine if the game was hard and annoying? <laughs> just ask my wife. A small thing that I have to add about the map and traversal is that I did have to do a little bit of googling to find some bosses, item locations, or weapons. But it didn't take away from my experience. In fact, I actually encourage it just a little bit because it didn't feel like finding out where to go should be a part of the challenge. But for those who want that challenge, it still allows them to have the feeling of I'm lost but I don't need help when so many other games don't even give you the choice. So we all know this game has PvP and co-op, right? Well, on PC, you can make it even more fun and even more broken. Seamless co-op completely breaks the structure of the game, but it is one of the most fun things I've ever done in a long time. You do have to start a new game, but once you're in with two to four friends, it's like the game becomes easy mode. The game does auto balance, so it's not a complete cakewalk, but I definitely recommend it to those who want a more social and casual experience than going completely solo. This is also the perfect option for those that are intimidated by the game and just want to struggle with a friend, because I also do feel like playing it with a friend makes the game way less intimidating. So I'm not a tutorial channel by any means, but here are some actual tips for those who are just going to jump in now or this video inspired you. Number one may sound dumb, but upgrade your weapons. I spent about a quarter of the game not upgrading my weapons, and I thought I was stuck with the weapon I had or finding a better weapon down the road, but I had no idea you could just get smithing stones and upgrade them. Here are the locations on some bell bearings and stuff like that, because that way you'll get infinite smithing stones and all that stuff. Number two. Grinding. Grinding isn't the most fun thing in the world, but if you find yourself stuck and you've already upgraded your weapon, you might have to go grind some runes. Here are the two popular locations. This is a way to level up quickly. However, I do not recommend over leveling unless you want that kind of experience. I'd say maybe level up five times and then go attempt again and then back and forth until you eventually beat them. Number three, use spirit ashes. They're basically an AI co-op buddy, especially if you upgrade them. Don't just start and spam them willy-nilly. I'd like for you to actually try the boss by yourself. Or if you're like me, like a hypocrite, I just started spamming them. Um, but I highly recommend the Mimic tier. And just be careful, maxing out the Mimic tier will make you really OP. But if you are struggling, I highly recommend using Spirit Ashes. Number four, do not be afraid to look stuff up. This game is super massive. This is not like Dark Souls where the game is relatively linear. You will get stuck and you will get lost. I personally had to look stuff up. I don't find this cheating and I don't think anyone would. It's more of suggestions on how to get there because I still prefer the lack of details within the map and choosing via Googling things to find things out how I want myself. I can kill you and defile your corpse. Mm -hmm. Like many other videos have argued, there is a difficulty slider in Elden Ring. It's just in the gameplay and not in the settings menu. Want to solo everything basically naked and barehanded? I'm gonna call HR but go for it. You want to beat Millennia on like your sixth attempt with a bleed build in the Mimic tier? That's actually what I did. This game is too good to be ignored because of difficulty, because these games have never been more accessible. And I'm one of the people that gave it a chance. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and all that crap. I teased it a little bit and maybe it was a little obvious. My wife said it was. Little happy announcement that I had back in the previous video. Um, my wife and I are having a kid. I don't know how I'm gonna find the time to make more videos. I will definitely prioritize it, not over the child and the wife, obviously. Just thank you again so much for watching and see you again next time. Stay hashtag blessed.